All right, so this is the linked list class that we were last coding on on Tuesday. Um, I wanted to show you something like not related to linked lists. Some of my formatting got off as I was typing this, like things aren't indented consistently, like here's a great example, um, which may or may not bother you, um, but it bothers some of us a lot because we don't like things like that. Um, but more importantly, Sometimes different spacing can make it hard when you start to like collaborate as a team because files look like they've changed when really it's just different spacing and things like that. So um, there are tools that help us do that. And when we get toward the end of the semester, we'll have those additional extensions and things configured so that all of our files get formatted exactly the same way every time they get saved, which is great. We're not going to really do that right now um, for this chapter, but I am going to show you like if it does bother you, there are tools in VS Code that can like make this easier. Um, so you can always go up to the View menu and choose Command Palette, or on the Mac you can do Shift. I guess I think on these keyboards it'd be Shift Win P, and on a regular Mac it'd be Shift Command P, um, and on a Windows computer it'd be Shift Control P. Um, whatever key combination works on your computer, you can bring up the Command Palette, which is great. Um, and this command palette, you know you're looking at commands because you got the greater than symbol here. Um, and if you just start typing stuff, it filters things that match. So if I type format, I can see all the commands that relate to formatting. Um, and so I can choose, I can just click here and choose format, format document. I can also see that there is a keyboard shortcut already assigned here. Um, and I can change that keyboard shortcut if I want. Um, so I'm gonna format this document because I don't like how it's spaced and now it's all better, which makes me happy. So that's a good way for me to start my day. Um, feel free to explore the command palette. There is so much stuff built in VS Code. I know personally I've like barely scratched the surface um, and I'm always impressed with, with what's there when I look for something. So um, take, take good advantage of that, that command palette. All right, so we coded Which one do you get? This one? Okay. Um we coded um Don't want to lose that thought. Ah, we coded our linked list class, but we need to add some code to list demo. So go ahead and switch over to list demo and we're going to uncomment a whole bunch of things. stuff will all be online. All right, so for now, let's see. Actually, I wanna finish, okay, we need to finish the iterator first. I got a little ahead of myself. We're gonna comment this out in a moment, but let's finish the iterator first so we can actually comment this out and, and run it. All right, so let's switch back to the linked list class, find where we left off. We had our instance variables defined. We had our constructor defined. We implemented <clears throat> has next, which wasn't too bad, just to determine if there is a next node. Then we used that in our implementation of next. This is where things were getting more tricky. Um, and I guess just to review, because again, this was like challenging stuff. Um, Conceptually, here's where our iterator starts. Position is null, previous is null. When position is null, it means the iterator is at the start of the linked list. When we call next, position always refers to the node we just iterated over. Whether we're going forwards or backwards, it refers to the node we just iterated over. Um, so position refers to this node, because we just iterated over Diana, previous is still null because previous refers to the second to last node we iterated over, okay? So that's why that would still be null. When we call next again, position will refer to the node we just iterated over, which is Harry, and previous will refer to the second to last node we just iterated over, which is therefore Diana, okay? um, And we keep updating this is, after next part as we go. So we incorporated all of that into our implementation of next. 
we first do our error handling. What if there is no next node? We throw the no such element exception. We have to update previous first because as soon as we change position, we've lost the reference that we need to store in previous. We update the is after next. We deal with the special case for being at the start of the list. Um, where position we assign to first. If we're not at the start of the list, it's easier, position equals position.next, and we always return the data of the node we just iterated over. So that's what next looks like. All right, so a little bit of review there. Let's go ahead and look at remove. Well, actually, no, let's do add first. So here's add. Adds an element before the iterator position and moves the iterator past the inserted element. Okay, so the java.com comment here specifies the behavior that we have to implement. Okay. So what if we invoke the add method on an iterator that is at the start of the linked list? That means position equals null. Okay, what are the steps we have to do? Well, we have to make a new node. We have to store the data in that new node. You can tell I drew the arrows in this picture. This is not from the textbook. I did a great job. Um, the new node we then need to link into our linked list. And what that looks like is that first, which was referring to Diana, now needs to refer to Juliet. And the next for Juliet refers to Diana. And the position in the iterator needs to refer to Juliet. Okay, so there's a lot of things to do here with the add. Yeah. Yeah, if you track that squir squirrely line, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. The iterator is also referring to Juliet, which now that we're in chapter 16 means that we have iterated over Juliet. So conceptually, we would think of it as between like Juliet and Diana. Yep. So let's deal with this special case first. The special case of the iterator is at the start of the um, linked list. And let's be like smart, strategic about this. Um, so let's check our, I guess we have to write the method first. Public void add takes one parameter, which is the element to add. Here's our special case. If position equals null, we're going to do something special. All that stuff we just conceptually talked through in terms of creating the new node, having the new node refer to what was the first node, and then updating first, does that, have we written code like this before? Does this ring any bells? If we scroll back up here, Here's the add first method. It makes a new node and sets the data instance variable to the specified element. It then updates new node.next. It then updates first in the linked list. This does everything we need except for updating the iterator. So let's not recreate this code. Let's just invoke the method that we wrote earlier. So if we're at the start of the linked list, we can simply call add first and pass along the element. Now we're not quite done because we also need to update our iterator, but that's just as simple as saying position equals first. The only thing that the add first method doesn't do is to update our iterator. And after we add a new element to the start of the linked list, um, using the add method, the iterator should be positioned after that element and therefore needs to refer to that node. That's all it takes to handle the special case. All right, well, what if it's not the special case? Let's look at a picture for that. 
So now our iterator is referring to some other node, right? In this case, it happens to be the second node in our linked list. It could be any node in our linked list. It doesn't really matter. So position is referring to Harry, meaning we just iterated over Harry. So quick check here before we start writing code. We're going to call add and we're going to add Juliet. I want you to think to yourself for like 10 seconds before you talk to your neighbor. Is Juliet going to be positioned between Diana and Harry or between Harry and Romeo? Think for 10 seconds and then confer with your neighbor. You all are very bad at counting to 10 seconds. All right, that's not true. Not all of you, just several of you. All right, it's been 10 seconds. You can talk. All right, quick check. Thumbs up for that between Diana and Harry. Who likes that one? Thumbs up for between Harry and Romeo. So we're not totally in an agreement, all right? It's harder to answer this question in chapter 16 than it was in 15, right? Think back to chapter 15. If we had just iterated over Harry, we would put that vertical bar between Harry and Romeo, and that would be like where we'd stick the new node, okay? So conceptually, that's why we insert it now we can't have a reference between two nodes, right? So this is harder now in chapter 16 because position refers to Harry. Position refers to the node we've already iterated over, okay? So we're already past Harry. So when we insert, it's gonna go between Harry and Romeo. So it, it's definitely more challenging now than it was before. Oh, let me click next here, next picture. We have four steps to do. We're gonna code all four of these steps. When we insert a new node in the middle of a linked list, we need to create the new node. That's step one. Here's creating the new node. We store the data in there. Here's Juliet. We link next to this node, to Romeo. What this diagram doesn't show you is where does that come from, okay? So we need to store in next the reference to this Romeo node and so personally, I have to go back to the previous picture and look, what is already referring to the Romeo node? Oh, next in the Harry node refers to the Romeo node. Okay, that's cool. What refers to the Harry node? Uh, position does. Okay, but now we're like two levels of indirection. We're going to say like position dot next. That's what we're going to store down here. So we're just gonna code step one first, then we're gonna come back and look at step two, three, four. All right, so let's code just step one. Take this in small little chunks. First things first, we need to make a new node. Node, ah, node, new node, equals new node. There we go. New node not data equals element. Remember the element is the data that we store, it's not the node. And then here's step number one new node dot next where do we get that reference from well it's actually equal to position dot next this is step number one we've made a node we've initialized data new node dot next equals position dot next Again, I, I know I mentioned this on Tuesday, but the order in which we do these steps is critical. If we change any of this order, we're gonna lose the references we need, right? So we have to update new node.next now before we change the value of position, because once we change the value of position, we lose the reference we need. So right now we have linked our new node to this Romeo node by using position.next gives us that reference. All right, step two. Step two now is we need to update the Harry node to refer to this new node, right? Because we're inserting this new node between Harry and Romeo. So we need a reference to the Harry node. Where does that come from? It comes from position in our iterator. That still refers to Harry. So we can say position.next equals new node. So let's write that line of code.
and that's number two. At this point, the new node is successfully linked in between the other two nodes, but we're not quite done yet because we haven't updated the iterator. If we go back and look at the Java doc comment, when we add an element using this add method on the iterator, it moves the iterator past the inserted element. Right now, position is still referring to Harry. It should be referring to Juliet to show that we're past Juliet. So that's step three. We have to update position to refer to new node. And we have to do this as step three because we needed the old value of position for steps one and two. So let's code this. Position equals new node. That's step number three. We have one more thing to update, and that is the is after next field. Okay. Um, we just called add, and whenever we call add or remove on an iterator, we no longer have just called next. And so therefore we need to set this to false because at this instant we can't support remove um, because previous and is no longer like consistent with our iterator because of the node we've added, okay? Um, so we're gonna set is after next to false here. So let's do that. I'm gonna do this outside of the if else block because we do this for either case. So is after next equals false. That's step number four. So this is just to connect this back to to a couple days ago, we wrote each step that's outlined in this crazy diagram, which is super complicated, only gets a single line of code, right? We're not writing a lot of code, but the complexity is really high, okay? So again, don't underestimate um, the challenge of this just because we're not writing a lot of code. It is complicated stuff to keep track of all these references. Let's try remove. Removes the last traversed element. This method may only be called after a call to the next method. Okay. We'll better understand why you can't call remove if you haven't called next as we code this method. Remember, that was just a rule we had to live with in chapter 15. Now we're going to understand why. So let's write our header, public void remove. We only support invoking remove if we've already called next. So we're gonna check for that error condition first. If not, is after next. We're gonna throw a new, this is a different exception. This is an illegal state exception. What we mean by this is the iterator isn't in the proper state to call remove. So therefore we throw the illegal state exception. What's the remove look like? Well, again, we have two cases for remove. If we have invoked next only once, and so we've iterated over the first node in our linked list, that's a special case. And we need to write code for that special case. So here we've called next, we've iterated over Diana, therefore position refers to Diana. If position was null, it would mean that we're at the beginning of the list and we couldn't call remove. So we've iterated over Diana, is after next is true. What do we need to do? Well, not too much, it's not too bad. We need to update our linked list object such that first refers to Harry. Okay. And where is that gonna come from? Well, what refers to Harry? The Diana node refers to Harry. What refers to the Diana node? Well, first does, first refers to the Diana node. So first.next 
gives us that reference for Harry node, and we can store that back in first. So let's code that. Except let's co code the um, special case first. So if position equals first, meaning we've iterated over the first node in our linked list, have we written code to remove the first node in the linked list? That's a silly question. Yeah, we did. Remove first. We already coded this before. So let's just invoke it. But we still need to update our iterator. If we remove the first node, the iterator is now at the beginning of the linked list. How do we specify that? We set position to null. That's our special case. We just call remove first. All right, what if it's not the special case? So now, look at our iterator. Position refers to Harry, meaning we've just iterated over Harry. Previous, therefore, refers to Diana, the second to last node we iterated over. We did call next. When we call remove, we want to remove this Harry node. So what do we have to do to get rid of Harry? Well, we have to update the Diana node to refer not to Harry, but to refer to Romeo, okay? What refers to, Ro refers to the Romeo node? Well, the Harry node refers to the Romeo node with next. What refers to Harry? Well, uh, position does, right? So we can update, but we, we need to update Diana. So what refers to the Diana node? Oh, previous does. This is why we need previous. If we didn't have the previous instance variable, we would have no way to get at the Diana node and therefore no way to update next to refer to Romeo instead of Harry. This is why previous is so important. Okay. So we're first going to do this. We're going to update, um, use previous to update Diana to refer to Romeo. So let's code that first. Previous.next. Okay, so previous refers to Diana. We're going to set that to position.next to skip over the node we're removing and go to Harry. And this is step number one. Again, just a single line of code, but a lot of indirection and complexity there. When we remove Harry, our iterator needs to, um, you know, think of it conceptually as position between Diana and Romeo, and therefore it needs to refer to Diana. So we have to update position to refer to Diana. What does refer to Diana? Previous does. Okay, so step two isn't so bad. We're just going to set position to previous. And that's step number two. All right, what's next in our diagram? Step number three, we set is after next to false. Let's do that, and then I'm, I've got another question for you. That we need to do that regardless. So I'm going to do that outside of the block and set is after next to false. Here's the question I'm going to propose and have you think about, try to think about it on your own for a few seconds and then talk with your neighbor. Um, and then we'll share out. Why, based on our implementation of this linked list and iterator, why can we not call remove twice in a row? Okay. So think about that on your own for a few seconds. Talk through it with a neighbor and then we're going to share answers out. Why can't we call remove twice? If you're not sure, think about like, what would it look like to code that?
What do we think? Who wants to share a potential idea? What do we think? Why can't we call remove twice? Yeah, we coded it so we couldn't, but I think your, your first point is, is what we really run into. Previous is no longer valid, right? Um, previous and position are both referring to the same node. That doesn't work, right? And we can't update previous because if we wanted to update previous, we would need like another instance variable called previous previous, right? And that would never stop. Like we would have to have all the previouses. Um, and so that's why there's this behavior in the linked list class where you can't call remove twice in a row, okay? You have to call next um, before you call remove, right? So hopefully that takes something from chapter 15 that we just had to accept with the Java standard library. And now we actually understand why there's that limitation. So very cool. All right, we have one more method. This one isn't so bad. This is the set method public void set. This is where we're not adding an element. We're not removing an element. We're just changing the element's value. We're just changing the data stored in the node. You can only invoke the set method if you've already called next because the set method sets the value of the last traversed element. So if we haven't called next, we can't call set. So let's check that first. If not is after next, we're going to throw our new illegal state exception again. But if we have called next, do I have a picture of this? I don't know if I do. Let's see. Nope. Um, but this is pretty straightforward. I guess we can just look at any of these. Position refers to the node we just traversed over. We can just say position.data to change the value of that element. That's all we have to do. So we're just going to say position.data equals element. That one's not so bad. Now we have a complete implementation of our linked list iterator. Um, the most complicated class we're gonna code together in, in this chapter for sure. Now that we've coded this, we can switch over to list demo. We can click on line eight. We can shift click to line 32. We can hit on the Mac windows slash or on windows control slash and uncomment all those lines of code at once. Super fast, easy way to comment uncomment blocks of code. Um, oh, and it doesn't compile. Look at that. We never implemented the list iterator method. All right, my bad. We, I must have skipped right over that. Let's find out where list iterator goes. Oh, right here. Here's the Java doc. Return an iterator for iterating through this list. Well, I guess we should have done that. So let's, this is easy. This is not bad. So this is public, it returns a list iterator. And the method is called list iterator, just like the standard Java library class. And we simply can say new, or I'm sorry, return new list iterator. Oh, just kidding. What do we call our class? Linked list iterator, thank you. New linked list iterator. Oh, now this, man, this is a mess. Now this isn't compiling. It says type mismatch cannot convert from linked list, linked list iterator to list iterator. My intention is that the linked list iterator implements the list iterator interface, but I never uncommented the rest of this code. So it wasn't, now it does. I had commented that out in our starter code because I wanted this to compile even if we hadn't finished all the list iterator methods. But now we have finished the methods. Now we are fully implementing the list iterator class. So this compiles, this method compiles, 
If I go back to list demo, this compiles and I can just hit run and actually see like all the stuff it does. So we're adding Tom, Romeo, Harry, Diana. We're making our new list iterator. I'm still using the comments here to show where the iterator is conceptually. So we call next twice. So now the iterator is between Harry and Romeo. We add Juliet and Maria, Maria between, uh, between Harry and Romeo. So we've got them added. We call next, go over Romeo, remove Romeo, make a new iterator, iterate through the whole thing and print it all out. And so sure enough, we see Diana, Harry, Juliet, Maria, Tom. So this demonstrates many of the methods that we just wrote.